Hello, uh, my name is Chris from Game on Oz in Australia. I'm here with Vladimir from Gold Knights, and tonight we're here to talk about the last Oricrew. And Vladimir, what's your position at the development studio? Hi. So, so my position at Gold Knights is uh, executive producer. Uh, so I'm basically uh, doing uh, deals with publishers and putting the team together and. Uh, own a, a game vision together with our uh, uh, creative director and game director, Pavel, my business partner. Okay. And how many uh, are in the whole team or is it just the two, two persons there? No, 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 no. We have, we have now uh, around 40 people. Uh, 40. Wow. And, uh, uh, the team started at uh, like 2015. Pavel was a small crew um, of, uh, of uh, people who are kind of uh, junior in, in the industry, not, uh, not necessarily as, a, as engineers or as artists, but uh, in the industry. And uh, I am in the industry for almost 20 years. So when I came back uh, to Prague after living in Denmark and running studio there, I was looking for some interesting project to uh, participate on. I was uh, helping here guys on uh, Beat Saber, for example, etc. And then I found uh, Pavel with, with, with this project and I could see a huge potential in there. So basically we started working together uh, in beginning 2019. We restructured the whole game in a way that it's, uh, it's really interesting for, for our target audience that we, we are creating not only a game, but all the, the own IP, uh, yes. something unique and, and, and creative enough to give us freedom to develop on that. And then I started to lure in uh, my friends from industry, my, my like w w other veterans or senior uh, guys. And basically we bump up the team from 12 guys to 40 ish. We have yeah, right. Team. That's awesome. And what's the, what's the game development scene like in the Czech Republic at the moment? Is there many studios? I there is quite 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 a lot like we have uh, guys from warhorse with uh, kingdom Cup. oh yes we have uh beat saber or beat games uh, now it's not beat games anymore it's facebook uh, no. we have uh, we have actually quite a big studios here uh and um, i would say for 10 million country or 10 million citizens or uh, 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 guys around you know it's it's quite uh, quite a lot of successful titles so okay. um, it looks quite well that's good. And now the last Oricru. So tell me about yes. this game. So the last Oricru is uh, our uh, vision, let's say, how the modern RPG should look like nowadays. Obviously not a modern RPG done from hundreds of people, but rather like smaller team, tons of people. Yep. But it is, uh, it is RPG uh, for like we can see quite a lot of people who likes the, 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 the storytelling in there, who likes the challenging uh, challenging combat systems so we made uh, uh, I, I, I would say quite coherent uh, trademark which uh, which uh, aims on all of this so if you like uh, story and we have like dynamic storytelling if you like a uh, challenging combat if you uh, like uh, to play it in co-op with, with with your body on, on couch um, if, if, if you like um, rather more replayability and shorter, uh, sessions and so on, then I, I believe uh, Last Story Crew is for you. And it's got co-op? Yes, yes. Co-op is actually one of features uh, I've been myth missing a lot in in, uh, in action RPGs. And um, honestly, for some action RPG, it's quite uh, tricky to make co-op because it's not just turn it on, but you need to have enough agenda for both players. So if one player is talking somewhere for ages, you know, second, would be bored. So um, building the co-op RPG or RPG with strong co-op, yep. it's something you need to do from very beginning and kind of um, incorporate it into the system. So the other player, the second player has always something to do. Um, also, um, uh, it doesn't break uh, the, the system. So, so you don't collide in your reactions cool. and so on. So, so we, we, we build it up in a way that we really believe it's, is how the co-op in this type of, of games should look like. Um, as, as an example, like um, it is primarily single player game, but in co-op you can solve some situations differently. So for example, if you fight 
with uh, a boss in a in a second level it's pretty like um, a hard uh, hard uh, hard guy but then yeah. in two players one one of you can lure the boss under the gate second can kick down the gate and just kill the boss instantly which makes it much more easy so you can find situations like this you can find spells which you can cast through yeah. the second player and and magnifies them uh, you can you can you can find a lot of options which are hidden there kind of for two players okay. all right so let's let's have a quick look at the truck the game's trailer and then we'll come back shortly ever had one of those days when you wake up on an unknown planet after being frozen for 350 years dumb question can't wait to find out how the hell i got here and just what the hell is going on? So, I get involved. Maybe I can even influence the outcome of some things. I soon realize my own decisions have a huge impact. And isn't that what it's all about? Being in charge of my own destiny and the destiny of this entire world. Wardania is full of secrets, hidden technologies, battles to be fought. Stories to be told. My stories. I am the last Aura Crew. Okay, and we're back with Vladimir from Gold Knights, and we're talking about the last Aura Crew. Just watched the trailer. It looks absolutely magnificent. So, the world of Wardania. Tell me about that. So the world of Wardenia, as you could see from the trailer, is it's, it's a combination of sci-fi and, and, and medieval world. Uh, it starts actually in quite medieval environment, but uh, further you progress through the game, more uh, sci-fi elements you, you, you start using or in, uh, you start uh, exploring. Um, it's it also uh, it's is uh, not some deadly real, but the world of Wardenia is 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 a place where just now is, is a big war happening yep. um, and you are in the middle of this conflict and basically only based on your choice or like based on your actions you can develop uh, the conflict and affect the, the future of those races and not only that after the war yep. you can also be the one who uh, come up with a peaceful solution or brings the peace in the end or you can just destroy the whole uh, the whole planet, maybe. Uh, yeah. But uh, uh, what I'm what I'm trying to show you is that uh, you, as a player, are really like in the middle of a lot of uh, the conflict actions and things happening around you, and only your reactions on that uh, really develops the the story and the, and the game. So it's really um, choice player choice driven. Then, you, like obviously, you've got some branching pathways and narrative. But it's the, up to the player then to play essentially how they how they would react to that each situation as it comes along. Yes, yes, I, I know it's uh, it's it might be hard for players to believe because there is a lot of titles uh, telling that they are like you know uh, uh, really dynamic and there are a lot of branching decisions and so on. But we really spent a lot of time on this. Out of our forty guys, we have like three writers who only write the story and uh, yep. and 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 dialogues and um it's not as we have like 10 books in the game we have something like two books of text yes. and in one playthrough you might see only one third one yeah one wow. half maximum okay. but but the tricky thing is you know there is like really like tens of branches and then for each uh, way through those branches uh, it needs to still make sense you know and even we don't want player to decide in the beginning we would want to let you reconsider kind of feel. your decisions yeah so once once you decide that those guys are not the guys you want to help them anymore uh, you can still switch the the side and it still needs to make sense so there is really a lot of work connected with this but yeah. we really think it's um, it's 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 a different experience
and in the game I saw um, a s kind of snippets of three factions, the Naboru, the Ratkin, and the Broken. Um, and you and you can um, side with one or many of those. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Uh, you, you can side with one, maximum two. Okay. Three is hard. You can also annoy everyone. That's that's more <laughs> easy. Um, but yes, yes. Basically, you are in the in a in a in a conflict between Naboru, who are the uh, uh, let's say the, the the rulers of that of that uh, world, and then Redkins, who are more like their slaves, and then there is this third party of broken army, uh, led by one or commanded by one one guy uh, in the background, uh, which is trying to basically um, uh, to um, uh, use that conflict to their own. Uh, ah, yes, own, yep. Uh, yeah, so as as in uh, unfortunately in uh, in in normal world there is usually a third hidden party. Yes, you know, having benefit from that. Yeah, I mean, I've played a, a fair number of RPGs over the years, and it's always beneficial to have an odd number of factions. You know, a lot of games will just have the two, and it's you know order or chaos. But games that have that third element, um, and it doesn't matter the genre, but just having three factions just gives you a bit of versatility and. Sometimes you feel like you're in a mean mood, and sometimes you feel like you're in a you know positive good mood. So it's very cool to have that third option. That's that's, that's a great point actually, because two two sides uh, give you or don't give you not only enough options for the storytelling, but only also for the for the gameplay. Because for us or in our case, we use like the rock paper scissors principle in gameplay as well like one party if you side with them they have pretty good weapons against the other party but the third party uh, is stronger against them so yeah. it also force you or force you motivates you to change weapons change play styles yep. um, which is quite quite uh, healthy for rpg games yeah that's great and um, is it, I've just saw some voice acting or heard some voice acting in the trailer there. Is, there, is it completely fully voice acted or is there only cutscenes or how does that work? It, it is fully voice acted. Yes. Oh, that's great. We, originally, we, we were thinking about some uh, more, uh, let's say, um, uh, like a cheaper solution, but then we figure out that the story is such important driving uh, element uh, through the whole uh, gameplay experience that we really want those emotions mm. in every piece so yep. we found quite good actors uh, and uh, and and really like even work with them um, to 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 achieve this yeah that's really cool because I, I um like it, it depends on the story in an rpg whether full voice acting gets me in or just enough and generally in the, probably the last probably half a dozen or so that have had voice acting in just the cutscene it's kind of you're invested in the cutscene then you kind of disconnect a little bit play the mechanics of the game and then get reinvested in the story again so that's um yeah quite a cool design feature to have or, and the ability for you guys to have that full voice acting that's great yeah yeah it is it is great and for us it really works very well so now with the um being an action rpg uh i love the combat that i've seen so far um, so we'll get to bosses in a sec, but just on the general kind of combat, you know, leading up to quests, etc. You've got melee, one-handed, two-handed, and magic. Um, what kind of magic is there? Kind of is there schools of magic, or is it just magic and it has a set of set of skills? It is. In our case, it's quite specific because. Um, as, as I as I as I mentioned, it's uh, the whole world is combination of, of sci-fi and and medieval. Let's say, yep. um, from some reason, like 350 years ago, uh, technology stopped working there. So those pieces, what you can find as a magic, uh, you might figure out it's a, a technology in the end, a hidden technology, okay. which still does work. So it is it is a bit different approach to the magic, but in the end, if you want to categorize it very uh, easily, uh, we still have like three basic schools. Each race okay. has his own way how to use that hidden technology, and uh, and then uh, as a player, you can find equipment from those different schools. So you don't invest into fire magic as a school but cool. you you find more of those items if you if you lean towards the the, the race which is using fire magic so it's yep. more about the story decisions and amount of 
uh, equipment you find uh, within that uh, story uh, path. Okay. And um, it said, it's, did I hear right, the skills-based progression in the game? Yeah, yes. We have, we have, uh, we have uh, basically skill point for each level up, and then you can put it into a few, relatively few um, attributes. Uh, and, and, and those attributes are unlocking uh, a lot of equipment. So basically we, we are, we're trying to, rather than having like uh, uh, tens of different attributes have yep. a smaller number, but with quite a big impact on equipment you can use, magic you can use, uh, how much you can carry and so on. Okay. And with the weapon system, um, can you use any weapon or is it uh, faction specific or how does the weapon systems work? So as, as I said, there is the, the rock, paper, scissor uh, 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 scheme or, or principle. So you can use any weapon, but against different enemies, those weapons are, or different races, they are differently efficient. Um, uh, for, for, for like from top down point of view or RPG point of view, we have, uh, like six main weapon classes okay. it's like uh sword axe double hand uh hammer yep. and a uh, few others and uh those have very different animations move sets uh also timings so with hammer you are really like um tank but also with against the fast enemies it's quite hard to find the, the right window of opportunity to hit and not not getting smashed so it it brings quite different play feel um and um and uh on top of that there is the the magic which can be incorporated in in weapons as well as uh, uh as, as a special attack so you can have like uh, weapons casting some uh some lightning balls and so on okay that's awesome Yes, and when I was looking at the combat, I saw red arrows. So if there was a monster to the side, there was a kind of red arrow. Is that like a, a threat meter or a threat direction arrow? Yes, yes. There, it is um, an additional information for a player. We don't have um, some heavy, heavy. Sorry, we don't have some heavy uh, stealth principles. Uh, there are some some small missions where uh, you should use rather stealth approach if you want to. Uh, uh, succeed but uh, in general uh, uh, this is more about you to handle correctly the situation like you know that you get too close to some enemy uh, and you're still fighting with another so you should rather step back cool. and not fight against two two guys uh, at the same time and so on yeah and with uh boss fights it kind of looks like a, a souls like difficulty uh we definitely um uh, those games we like and, um, and, and, and they are close to our heart. So yes, we are trying to achieve a similar uh, feeling when it is hard, it is unforgiving, but it is also fair yes. um, and it is skill-based. So yes, with bosses, you really need to read their moves uh, because uh, one uh, or two hits can, can just kill you. Yeah, and uh, yes, then you need to reach the same point and collect uh, experience points if you want to still uh, level yep. up. So, and when you die, what happens? Uh, is it like a um, uh, you know you have to reload, or do you respawn and come back and get some experience back, or how does death work? Yeah, th there is no reload in our game. It, it is actually very much incorporated in, in the gameplay loop and also in the, in a story. You know, you figure out you have uh, some weird tech tech belt uh, around you and that belt uh, makes you uh, respawning uh, again and, and the whole world around you. Uh, and we play with this principle a lot, even in a, in a dialogue. So, you know, someone sends you somewhere uh, because you can die as many times you want. And so we, yeah. we kind of use this principle uh, even in a story. But uh, yes, in a, in, a, in, a, in a gameplay, there is no uh loading um you always just uh reborn and and try to recollect your souls also okay. uh as, as i mentioned before the some stealth mission it, it might be also a bit confusing because we don't have even missions in a way that you fail the mission and you need to reload 
Like, uh, if I give you an example, you should hide some weapon in the beginning of the game. If you manage to hide it, there is another story branch which okay. unlocks for you and you can go in that direction. And if you don't manage to hide it, the game doesn't stop. It just continues from there and you end up as a prisoner or whatever. So, um, yeah. so there is never reloading or some game over screen. That's really cool. That's awesome. And uh, so when some, when you've got a friend join in co-op, um, so if I'm playing the game and I'm at, let's say level five, and they they've got their own game and it's 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 couch co-op effectively, does their character stay persistent when they come to my game? And then if they if they gain a level in my game and go back to theirs, how does the connection work there? Yeah, so we we actually. Uh few years ago or two years ago when we started this we we had multiple different versions and we really heavily tested it um, and um, as, a, as an ideal solution for our type of game which is really like story driven is that there is one player who is hosting the game basically who is yep. uh, who is owning that that game and second player can hop on hop off uh, anytime but uh, you have shared inventory so if the player hops off he or she doesn't drag away any items sure. or anything. Uh, it's just like, uh, I, I join you, we can play together two hours, then I, I have to go yep. and you can continue. And then when I join you next time, uh, the game levels you up automatically to your level. Ah. So we are uh, always even and we can play from, from that moment together. You know, uh, it's there is like always uh, some trade-off, like the second player is, uh, let's say like additional muscle for you. Yeah. So uh, he cannot do, uh, he cannot like make some decisions, story decisions or uh, uh, affect some dialogues. Otherwise it was very confusing. So it's really like an additional muscle for you. But even that makes a lot of uh, fun situations, you know, and uh, as I said, the game is built around replayability. So often, you know, one player plays as a, as a the additional secondary player, and then uh, you just switch uh, for the next uh, playthrough, and yeah. and and you're leading leading the game, and I'm just uh, you know helping. So yeah. so it works actually very well for for our type of game and and size of the game. When you're playing co-op and your friend dies. Can you quickly run over and resurrect them and get them back in the fight? Or are they kind of out for that fight? There is actually a risk reward mechanic involved in this. So uh, you're, if you die, you can uh, re you can reborn in the in the beginning or in, on the checkpoint or yeah, okay. terminal, how we call it. Or your body can help you and, and then uh, you reborn with more health. And, and, and also you don't need to run across half of the level. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. So uh, it's 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 actually quite interesting because the game uh, obviously dynamically dynamically reacts on two players. So if second player hop on, the, the difficulty ramps up, and uh, you know some uh, enemy starts using like different attacks and so on. So it's like um, uh, if if one player dies and don't resurrect the second player quickly, there is quite a low chance to survive for the second yeah. player as well because okay. it's quite hard afterwards. Yeah. And then, so if I'm playing single player on a boss fight and I'm, I'm failing over and over and I bring my friend in, does the difficulty of the enemy scale up? Because there's two of us now? Uh, it's, it's not like, uh, <clears throat> it's not like uh, a same scale for everyone. Yeah. We obviously tweak it from situation to situation. So it is still playable and fun. But yes, in general, it is it is like that. Um, uh, if 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 you if you uh, ask your friend for help, the the difficulty scales up. On the other hand, the game works in a, in a way that like if you really cooperate, it is easier for you than in one player. Sure. Yeah. But if if you if you just run both of you on the other end of the level, uh, then yes, it's uh, usually too hard. Yeah. Fair enough. And what has been what's been the most challenging uh, process of developing the game to this point so far? There is uh, multiple things, but uh, from feature point of view, it was definitely the dynamic story and then dy dynamic uh, game structure because it, we really wanted to uh, achieve uh, a point where it is not about few decisions. We just uh, brand some dialogue and, and that ends up the same after like 20 minutes of gameplay. We really want to take you to different uh, 
play experience and the, the overall story flow. Uh, so it was it was very uh, very tough. Uh, we had to build our own uh, in-house uh, system for that, and it's obviously still still um, uh, quite uh, hard to finally polish it. Uh, so every branch is really s makes uh, total sense. So yep. we have uh, quite a lot of testers. We have our uh, like small community of focus testers who are testing it and playing it and giving us feedback so this is from features point of view definitely the most um the most um uh tricky or the the the, the most difficult part from yeah. uh studio's point of view it's always hard to come to studio which is small indie studio and you start to showing them like the the double a or let's say like you know the 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 commercial uh, yeah. quality bar and you have to uh, kind of switch their mindset so they are really like uh, on on that level um, and just bumping up from 12 to 40 people is always yep. uh, quite quite a challenge so yeah well I can yeah certainly say from my point of view um, having seen a lot of RPGs over the years your game looks magnificent and, and beautiful in aspects and I'm, I can't wait to kind of explore that world as well Thank you. That's great to hear. Always, this is a bit of energy which helps. So thank you yeah. for those words. And that's all right. Hopefully, you will you will say the same after playing it full scale next year. <laughs> exactly. And, and what's the what's been the most rewarding part of the process so far? So the most rewarding part was for us, um, and I, I, as I said, like I'm, I'm in the industry for twenty years. I worked with Activision with Sony, but I would say for team. Uh, uh, in general, the most rewarding was to start working with Koch Media as, as, a, as a like really uh, valuable, highly valuable partner, and and to start to be part of Prime Matter, which is a new uh, exclusive or premium label within yep. within this uh, within this uh, publisher house. So for us, that that was the you know the the, the great uh, reward for our quite hard work for last yeah. years. Oh, that's excellent. Uh, uh, from what I've seen so far, it lo looks like you've got some really good progress. So, are you at the alpha stage? Or is are you going to be in alpha for a while, or what's the what's the kind of short term roadmap kind of looking like? Without giving too much away. Yeah, uh, we are we are between alpha and beta now. We are we are still trying to uh, not um, hurry up too much with the game because, yep. as I said, there are some quite um, unique features which needs to be uh, properly polished. So um, we are not at beta right now, but uh, we will be definitely released uh, next year. So we are not okay. far from beta as well. Yeah, from my point of view, as just one guy that in Australia that plays games, take your time. This is your game. M you know, get it right from from how you feel it's right. Yeah, yeah. That's you know, this is always this is always uh, tricky because obviously it's in the end uh, every game. Uh, if you want to not only build a game but Built a studio, a successful studio. It is about uh, some uh, commercial success. It is about um, uh, you know the right uh, amount of investments for uh, the expected value and so on. But I believe we are really bumping up the quality of the game, and I can see it every 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 month uh, yeah. in a, in a, in a way that we can uh, take our time and really polish it properly. So. Yeah, I mean, I saw the I, I was sent an alpha. Um, gameplay footage with I think Toby's voiceover and then I saw the yeah. teaser last week and I could I could see a difference in quality just between those two videos so I think you're progressing that's really great. well cool uh, and that's great. It, it was it was visible and it's it's definitely not the final stage so. uh, it's, it's exciting I'm excited to, to, to see more so and um, <laughs> What, so what's next? You know, again, without getting too much details, what's kind of next on the on the on the hit list for for the last Aura crew? Uh, so um, right now, as uh, like from the development point of view, we are heavily focused on combat um, uh, to make the combat uh, interesting enough, and uh, then obviously uh, the the uh, the different consoles versions because uh, we are um, on next gen or. Uh, Gen 9 um, version, uh, but uh, there are still some things we want to polish and properly uh, tweak uh, on on consoles. So those are our next next goals, and um, 
um, then we have a few hidden things I cannot talk about. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> no worries. That's good. Uh, you got to keep it to your chest. <laughs> And so I, I heard consoles. So are you planning PC and then just next gen or will you support current gen or old gen, I guess, now yes, as well? Yes, just, just next gen because honestly, we, we, um, there was a lot of uh, uh, like analysis around that. And uh, I've been thinking a lot about that. Uh, also, our publisher was, but we decided to go rather for a polished, uh, polished experience and focus yep. on gameplay than focusing on optimizing for uh, the the old gen or current gen or cool. i don't know how yeah i'm calling it old gen now <laughs> yeah so old gen um because it's it's really like especially for co-op game because co-op mm -hmm. is uh obviously more performance heavy it would be uh probably uh affecting negatively the, the game sure. as well yeah no, that's fair enough. Oh, well, thank you very much for your time, Vladimir. It's 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 really cool to see, and that teaser trailer just got me hooked well and truly, and I, I can't wait to see more of Silver's adventures and the branching stories and the factions and the combat and especially the boss fights with co-op. So uh, you're, you're on the right track thank for you. me. Thank you very much as well. Looking forward to see it in Australia because I have a bunch of friends there, so I can oh, good. at least let them know to see it. <laughs> Excellent. No worries. I shall do. And for all of us at Game One Oz, uh, thank you for your time. Thank you as well. Bye bye.